Now, some of England's biggest cities, including London, Birmingham and Manchester, are set to lose out as the government announces plans for one of the biggest changes to school funding in decades. The Education Secretary, Justin Greening, set out proposals to shake up the national funding formula, claiming that current levels across the country were inconsistent and unfair. Unions say it does nothing to alter a chronic shortfall in budgets. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Andy Davis, reports from Gloucestershire. Opened last year, the primary section of King's Oak Academy in Gloucestershire. In what many consider a vastly outdated postcode lottery of school funding, they're still working out here if they win or lose, under the government's plans to completely rewrite the way English schools are funded. What's been created over time is a funding system that allows similar schools with similar students to receive levels of funding so different that they put some young people at an educational disadvantage. Currently, a school in Barnsley could receive 50% more funding if it were located in the London borough of Hackney. So the government wants a new formula, based less on past local authority allocations, where from 2018, most schools' budgets would be set nationally. The new formula, says the government, would lead to around 10,000 schools in England seeing an increase to their annual budgets, some by more than 5%. A similar number, however, would see a reduction in theirs. But the government insists by no more than 1.5% per pupil per year. Many schools in London and other big cities, for instance, would see their budgets cut. Um, we have reception over on the left-hand side. A fairer, more transparent system is welcome, says the principal here in South Gloucestershire. But it's not the formula which bothers him so much as the health of the fund itself. National funding formula is good for uh, South Gloss. It's good for, good for schools nationally, I, I believe, uh, provided it is a, a national uh, funding formula which is fair, which means that uh, we're, we've got, in order to make it fair, more money needs to go into the system. The issue of not how the money is distributed, but rather how much there is in the first place, was raised today in a report by the National Audit Office. Their point that although the education budget has been protected, after you take into account rising costs, rising pupil numbers, the actual total amount of savings schools across England will have to make by 2020 equals £3 billion. The government, they say, has simply failed to communicate to schools the scale and pace of the savings needed. Today, five teachers' unions issued a joint statement claiming schools faced the biggest real terms cuts in a generation. Everybody is facing cuts. Even the schools that were worst off before this are going to be even worse off at the end of it. The government has to put more money in or class sizes across the country are going up, subjects are going to be lost, individual attention for our young people is going to go down. The Department for Education has said that with appropriate support, schools should be able to make the £3 billion savings needed through more efficient ways of operating.